All right. Let's, let's get, get into, into it. it. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Warfighter Tobacco Podcast. Uh, this episode is going to be a little bit different. Uh, so we did a live stream with How About That Cigar? And it went over really well. Uh, we talked about a lot of really good topics. Um, so we figured let's push that out on here for you guys to hear as well. Uh, and that way you guys can introduce to How About This Cigar Podcast as well. So uh, enjoy, guys. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you would please put your hands together without further ado, welcome to episode 259 of How About That Cigar Live. <laughs> Scott and John from Warfighter Tobacco Company. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. <laughs> it's good to be Hi, guys. here. How are you guys doing? Good. Thanks for having us on. Uh, it's nice to, uh, my, my, uh, my drink of choice is not a mystery tonight though. But, what is uh, it? It's a, uh, just Jameson. Yep. It's Jameson. One, of our, one of our go-to. When you were going over the descriptions for it, you're like, it, it, it smells like bourbon. And I, and I almost wanted to be like, well, it looks like bourbon. I guess it tastes like, so it's gotta be bourbon. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I just read what's on the bottle. <laughs> it said American whiskey. There you go. <laughs> So, guys, thanks so much for being on the show. We appreciate it so much. Uh, one of the things we love doing on the show is learning about uh, learning about brands uh, that are up and coming. And a great idea that Raul had was to have veteran-owned companies on throughout the month of uh, September. So, uh, like first and foremost, for for you and 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 uh, you know all those who uh, wear it now and have worn the uniform, thanks for your service. I appreciate you guys. So, yeah, so we, um, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, we, we actually, a couple weeks ago, we just had a conversation about this when, when people thank us for our service. Yeah. And uh, we came up with a couple, uh, um, kind of go to responses. responses. I like uh, it. And, and the one that I found that I think I like the most is, uh, you were worth it. I, uh, <laughs> that's good. That's a good one. I, I like just, that. I, like I, just, that noticed, I yeah. just noticed how ugly of a hat you had on. Oh, you like oh, that one? Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh oh Yankees. Yeah. Well, he said he bartended in in Boston, Boston yeah. for four yeah. years. That's. But he yeah. slipped his mind and said you he think was he's a not going to be wearing a. No, I did. I said any he's Boston a Patriots teams. fan. Yeah, yeah. If you're you a Patriots, if you didn't say you were a Sox, if you're a Patriots fan, <laughs> you're a Sox fan. You're a Bruins. Yeah, fan. Every, yeah just by default. <laughs> I was born there. I, I I was I was I didn't have a choice in the matter. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Yeah. How are your Jets doing? <laughs> oh, hey -oh. <laughs> They're They're undefeated so far this year. Really? Uh, <laughs> it's halftime right only, now. Only for a few more minutes. <laughs> Silence, Green Bay Packers. Always <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, you can't at all, but it's 16 to 7 right now. Uh oh. 16 to 7. They got another field goal. That's good. Huh? Fuckers. <laughs> 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 so um before we get into talking about the uh the company warfighter tobacco company i want to ask each of you uh and scott let's start with you just yeah, because i, I want to start with you um <laughs> talk to us about your uh your military service um and when you served and uh what your specialty was yeah so um actually john's gonna be a big part of uh my answer what uh what? so we uh <laughs> so so i i joined the army and uh i actually joined the national guard in 97 when i was still a junior in high school uh then when i graduated i went active duty um and i was in the 101st uh airborne division uh till 2007 i got out um and uh actually john and i were in the same platoon uh, we were both infantry guys. Uh, yeah, we, we served together from, in the same platoon, we were together from 01 to 04. Yeah. And so halfway yeah. through a deployment uh, into Iraq in 03, we were we were in the same platoon. And then I, I moved on to the scout section, and I was a sniper and sniper instructor uh, until I finished out uh, my time. Yeah. So, but yeah. Okay. And, John, what about you? Uh, so I, I was infantry as well. Um, and, uh, I joined in 2000, uh, and I was at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, 101st Airborne from, uh, 2001 to 2004. Uh, and then I actually did a year in the guard afterwards, um, in 05 and realized that well, it's not my cup of tea, but, uh, but yeah, Scott and I, we were in the same platoon together. We deployed together 0304. Um, I was a machine gunner and then a machine gun team leader. Uh, I, I mean, I he actually, the guy's a rifleman. Yeah, I was, I was a machine gunner, and then I when, took over his gun. He took I over my machine gun, yeah. and then <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, yep. 
but uh but yeah and then um just to kind of did you know jump into the story the time uh because it leads into it really well uh so i got out of the military uh completely out in 05 scott got out in 07 uh and then we didn't really talk until like 2011 2012 yeah uh we did a platoon reunion in west virginia um and we got really drunk on moonshine uh, nice and uh in their drunken state i was like i need to get scott at the gum store at the time and i was like i need to come sell guns with you scott's like yeah this is gonna be great and then sober the next morning both of us were like hey were we serious about that yeah uh and then about 10 months later uh, i ended up moving from europe to nebraska to go work at the at scott's gun store uh, and then about a year after that, we spun up Warfighter. Yeah, yeah. So, so gentlemen, what are you smoking? Yeah, tell us what you're smoking. Uh, so this is a Gurkha. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know Raul very well, don't you? <laughs> uh, so I'm smoking one of our new uh, Night Shift cigars. Um, we released this last year at uh, PCA, uh, and it's absolutely delicious. Um, but it, I've had, I don't even know how many cigars earlier today. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm smoking our uh, our Garrison Rosado, uh, and uh, I don't know for some reason this Rosado it's uh, it's I smoke a lot of these. It's kind of your go to. It's kind of my go to. Um, yeah, yeah. But so unfortunately, guys, I forgot to remind you guys to send us a package of cigars. But we are smoking. Um, we are all smoking the cigar from uh, OGT. Oak Glen Tobacconist, Tabac- which oh, we had on a show a few weeks ago. Yeah, from oh, their monthly cool. uh, monthly subscription, Stallone. Oh yeah, I've had that one. Yeah, yeah. the That's... stallions like you guys, so we thought we smoked. It. <laughs> <laughs> so now all three of us are smoking it. So, so the uh, the origins of uh, Warfighter Tobacco Company. Um, you know, I, I would imagine. You know that you guys were were both consumers of cigars before you sat down and said, "Hey, let's start a let's start a cigar company." So, uh, how'd you get into cigars, and how did that lead to the formation of Warfighter Tobacco? That picture right there, I took uh, in a rooftop in Baghdad. Um, and, oh wow! Uh, yeah, and so we were smoking. I'm assuming they were probably like horribly fake Cubans. Yeah. They might have been real. Who knows? They, yeah, they, they might have been real, but they were real dry. They were really dry. Um, <laughs> Isn't everything over there dry? I mean, yeah. I got to imagine it is. Yeah, there was nothing uh, it, 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 except for when it rained. And then it was yeah. just, just it was there was, miserable. Like in 03, like there was no Cigars for Warriors. There was no, like, like we were there for the initial push. There was no way to, like, take care of a cigar. No. Yeah, and the ones you bought on the I mean, they, local economy, they didn't have like humidors or you know, it was just sitting there yeah, in the open box. air. You know, like <laughs> yeah, you're taking what you're getting. Yeah, but um, no, and like the the the, the kind of shitty part is, is, you know, if we would have known like oh three oh four what we were gonna do ten years later, right? Like we would have got some awesome content, <laughs> like <laughs> awesome content. You know, we we have um, a lot of cool content that don't involve cigars. Yeah, yeah, but they would have involved. But we can't cigars. use it. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't really relate. And yeah. like, you know, we we don't do hype videos of ourselves and like our, our military yeah. experience and careers and stuff. Like, you know, we had fun. We did a job. It was great. Uh, we but, have some of the most amazing people in the world, but we don't embellish in it, and we don't make that our focus i mean it, it's kind of hard to say that because our company's called war well, warfighter <laughs> as a brand is for it's not us it's it's bigger than us. Yeah, it's bigger it, than it's us. for that warfighter yeah, it's, it's for you know yeah. whether it's military or not um you know that person that puts their life on the line uh puts their life in front of somebody else's just to make sure that that they're going to be safe and people that support it you know like that's the that's what the who the brand's for uh you know we have a saying you know we're, we're not a brand for everybody if you like us, we love you. If yeah. you don't like us, we don't care. <laughs> it's like we just don't care. You know? Oh yeah. I'm not in the business of making everybody happy. If yeah. I did, nobody would be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, and you don't want to be in that kind of business anyway. No. Just you no. know, no. because no. it's, it, it seems to me right off the bat, you guys are you guys are authentic, no nonsense, no bullshit. Just this is who we are, this is what we care about. And yep. you know, take take it or leave it. You know, but you you know, with a you know and I'm sure we'll get into this more, but it feels like there's a, there's like an element of service to it or, or serving others. Yeah. 
There definitely, yeah, there definitely is. Um, you know, we do a lot of stuff. Uh, I wouldn't really say well, it is outside the cigar world. Um, with a nonprofits, uh, you know, just getting guys outside, getting them out of their headspace, getting them around other people, like-minded people. Uh, and we were talking about it a little bit before the show as well. But you know, this rolled up thing that has leaves on the inside is a, a barrier breaker. It brings two people together and opens up a line yes, of communication, a conversation. Um, so, and all the other things that we like to do in life, now we have a tool where not only can we put two people together because we're in that community, we have that thing that's going to break that barrier down, allow those people to have the communication, that conversation. Um, and it, it, it feels good. Like that's the best part about all of yeah. it. <laughs> you know, I, I say that the, the thing that the cigar community and the military had in common that I see is like in the military, you didn't see race. You didn't see, you know, you, people that were different. Everybody wore green, right? Yeah. And, and then when you go into a cigar lounge and you're smoking a cigar, it breaks down all those barriers. Uh, you know, the, if you watch the media, you would just go crazy with like how divided this country is. But then you walk into a cigar lounge and you see people from everywhere, of all different makes and models. Right. And everybody's getting along and it's just a great environment. And uh, it's the closest thing to the military I can find where none of the other stuff matters. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, Scott, tell us about your acting career. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Allison. So, so, Allison's getting me back on track on how Warfighter kind of started. So, <laughs> so thank you, Allison. If, uh, do you guys, you know what an IMDb is? Oh, yeah. So, it stands for I am a douchebag, just so you know that. <laughs> but I happen to have one. And so, I was in a movie called Range 15. And, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with like Black Raffle Coffee, Article 15 at oh, the yeah. time, Ranger Up. Uh, they made this movie called Range 15. When I owned the gun store, I, su I supported it, and I was able to be in the movie as an extra, as a, as a zombie. Yeah, and, you got uh, killed like three times. Yeah, I got killed like three times, you know. But, uh, you know, it was a big deal. You're a zombie. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it, 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 it allowed me to hang out with like the Black Rifle guys and the, guy, the other veteran entrepreneurs and uh, – like I was already in business, but it motivated me uh, to start another business. And so I looked for a product, you know, that something that was like, I, you know, when it, like we were pretty good at social media with the gun store, but I would do a social media thing on, on a certain gun and people would just go to their local gun store and buy the gun or whatever. I got into manufacturing a little bit, but uh, I wanted a product that was a uh, consumable, um, something that I enjoyed doing. Uh, and I landed on cigars and, and being on the set of range 15 is kind of what, um, inspired me to like, think about it and like really kind of plan it. And then, uh, the following, I don't know, a couple months later, we were at shot show yeah. and me and my business partners, uh, we were sitting, well, my future business partners at the time <laughs> we were sitting around and, uh, just drinking and I'm like, we should start a cigar company. And like, none of us knew anything about the cigar industry. Like we, we smoked yeah. cigars. <laughs> but industry wise, we didn't know anything. And uh, so we, we started it, made every mistake you can make. Uh, we tried not to make the same one twice, you know, and I think that's what kind of kept us going. So, yeah. um, you know, and we started out, like I said, we did everything wrong. We got, you know, we're almost, what, nine years in almost now? Eight and a half. Yeah, yeah eight and a half years in. And, uh, you know, so we got, we got a lot of things figured out and uh, good product. Uh, you know, the veteran thing will get people to try the cigar but if your cigar isn't good they're right. not going to buy more uh so we have to focus on having a good product uh but we yeah we made we made a lot of mistakes initially uh i think that's normal so yeah well, yeah i think it's normal for any business yeah i mean my last name's not you know perdomo or padrone or you know like i wasn't born into the family you know <laughs> i had to i had to figure it out yeah yeah we yeah you know, I mean, if you're not if you're not making mistakes and you're not learning failing you're not risking anything you're right. not trying exactly. to be outside of the box you know um and That's if you make that same mistake over and over then you're not learning mm -hmm. you know so it's like it's just like uh it's almost like an interactive experience like you get direct <laughs> feedback it tells you what you're doing right or wrong and it hurts <laughs> when you make a mistake it hurts so yeah well it's it's like like you were saying it's the the it's the pain that kind of helps with that muscle memory to not yeah. not repeat 
what oh that that hurt okay yeah, don't yeah. It's, it it goes all the way from when we're a kid you know mom says don't touch the hot stove well what do we for first fucking thing we do we touch the hot stove we get yeah. burned we're like okay yeah she was right don't touch that thing you know and and you know um we all go through it yeah. time and time again and man if we can come out the other side of it being half for me yeah. for me i'll speak for my dumb ass yeah. for if i can come out the other side of it being like half a a stitch smarter than i was before that's like a that's like a big accomplishment yeah. so i'll take it I think you know there's that are. saying what doesn't kill you makes you stronger mm -hmm. <laughs> but what doesn't kill you sometimes hurts really bad i don't know if it makes you stronger <laughs> or not you know like i should be bench pressing like <laughs> office buildings by yeah. now <laughs> <laughs> I think failure has got to be a part of your growth. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be. Most definitely. Guys, before you started your own company, what cigars were you smoking? Oh, One of yeah. our, um, Matt asked a question. So before we did our own brand, my gun store sold cigars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I like that. yeah. I like that combination a lot. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so we sold a lot of Drew Estates. We sold, um, and, and that's how I met one of my dear friends, Jenny Lynn from Drew Estates. Uh, she used to be my rep and uh we're still good friends now yeah. and uh uh i don't know what else did we sell we sold a lot of drew states we say yeah we did a lot of drew state uh a lot of deadwood just because we were in nebraska yeah. and it was close um yeah what did i like to smoke though um so there was it, it it's kind of interesting right because like we knew for a little bit before we started warfighter that we were going to start warfighter um yeah so at once we kind of had that mindset, it was okay. We have, we need to know what is on the market right now. Yeah. So we tried a lot of new stuff. So we just went down the rabbit hole, smoking everything that we could get our hands on from every brand. Uh, you know, before we we started Warfighter, we probably went through shit, probably over a thousand cigars a piece. Yeah. And just smoking everything. In, in probably else what, a year's time. Yeah. Like, just yeah. just trying to figure out what everybody else is doing. Um, what common flavor profiles that you're noticing, uh, strengths, where the tobacco is coming from, just, you know, a little bit of everything. We were educating ourselves. Yeah, pretty much. And, you know, and, and uh, when uh, we were good at social media stuff from the get-go, right? Like, I think we were good at that with the gun store and whatnot. And so I went to IPCPR before we had the brand. I just attended it. And I would go around and I would talk to the companies. I'm like, hey, do you guys do social media? like oh yeah 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 we have a, you know how many followers do you have oh we had a lot you know and i'd look and like three thousand followers or whatever and i'm like how long you guys been in business like 25 years i'm like okay like i came back from that and i'm like john there is room here yeah you know, there and that was you know 2015 yeah 15. That was 15. so you know so that's kind of you know we we knew we were good at that kind of stuff right. and uh yeah do you guys still own the gun store no i sold that uh Hmm. Uh, once the cigars took off, I got out of that business and uh, haven't looked back. I, I, I don't. Miss, we I don't enjoy miss. shooting now. Yeah, we didn't enjoy shooting then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the things that I love learning about from up and coming cigar companies who started, you know, more recently, and like you, like you guys both said, you know, you didn't grow up in tobacco families. You didn't grow up in in cigar producing families. So I love learning from companies like yours about because there are a lot of choices that you have when when you start going around asking questions about where to have your blends made, who's going to do a good job making your blends and, and a good partner to work with to have your yeah. products made. You know, there's a lot of choices. So what made you guys land where you landed when it came to uh, production partners who were going to get it done the way you needed it done? Well, I mean, we, so we had some middlemen, you know, and we had to get like initially, like the first couple months of the company, oh, we, Jesus. we were getting cigars from <laughs> who knows, who knows. <laughs> and we started selling more cigars than the guy could get us. So we're like, to, okay. To, to put a little backstory on that real quick. So you understand where, why we're yeah. a cigar company being like, we don't know where we got cigars from. Um, so like he, like Scott was saying at shot show, we got drunk and we we're like, Hey, let's do these, this uh, cigar company It's going to be awesome. Uh, so that first business meeting was like, oh, cool. This is so fun. We're all motivated. Hey, anybody know where to get cigars? Yeah. And everyone was like, uh, like we knew uh, nothing. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. That, and, and so we were kind of proving the concept. Right. Because we didn't want to, like, we wanted to start slow and not go all in and fail. 
Uh, and so, like I said, it was the first couple months, right? We outgrew this guy. So we go down to Nicaragua and uh, we had a, a middleman and we eventually got rid of, got rid of a middleman. And now we work with a, a you know, we've worked with a couple really good factories, but yeah. right now we work with Esteban Carrera's factory and mm. everything's just really good. Uh, uh, works out great for us. So we're, uh, we're happy there. Yeah. And, and pr previous to that, we were, uh, um, all of our stuff was made at Placencia. Um, yeah. And, uh, I mean, the, the Placencia family is amazing. Yeah, yeah both, both uh, great factories. The yeah. factories are just insane. Um, but we were just a really, 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 really small fish in a giant pond. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so now we, uh, you know, we've grown a lot since then. Yeah. Um, and we're way, like, the factory, at the Espan Carrera factory, it's our factory. Like, we go down there. Uh, we we create the blends with Gonzalo. I mean, he it's you know, there's, I don't have to work through somebody. Yeah. I, you know, it's it, my, my only barrier is my English to Spanish. Yeah. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> you know, Man. but it's, but we're way hands on and, and, you know, with Placencia, it was okay. You know, we worked through a middleman and it, so there was, it's just time delays. But we were so hands off. We were so hands off. Yeah. yeah we didn't like that. Yeah. Um, so it, it didn't allow us to do like cool, fun projects and, uh, you know, new test blends and, yeah. one-off stuff and small batch releases like we we didn't really have the capability or the no, i wouldn't even say we had the capability to do it internally we just didn't have the ability to do that in production yeah you know and the and the one of the first spanish words that i really truly learned was uh manana does not mean tomorrow <laughs> it, it it means not right now right yeah and so you know that was uh that was one one thing that you know we're we're military guys right so you give me a timeline and if yeah. the timeline's not met, I'm upset and I'm trying to figure out why. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was a culture. Thing, yeah, but, you know, and, but whatever your timeline is, that's what I'm going to plan everything off of. Yeah. So if you're like, okay, my, your timeline is 90 days. Cool, I got 90 days. Done. And everything gets put in play for the 90 days. If it takes 200, I plan for 90. You yeah. know? <laughs> but yeah. if you tell me 200 and I plan everything and then you're like, oh, hey, just kidding. It's, it's 90. I'm already planned out. I get everything already set up. I just bump everything to the left. We're good to go. Yeah. Uh, but when it's the opposite, you know, that like we started to run into big issues where we had marketing drops and, and publication things and, and all of this content media scheduled and then everything got screwed and it was just yeah. like, okay, we got to fix this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, well, so guys, go, go ahead. So guys, run us through your line of cigars. Yeah. Give us your portfolio. Yeah. I should have brought them out here. I know we weren't even yeah. thinking. Uh, right, so we got, got, let's see, what do we got here? Okay. So we have a Sumatra. Yeah. I have a Corojo. There's a victory. I'm smoking a night shift and you have the Rosado. So we got, so we have a, we got to go. I'll start. <laughs> I'll start from the beginning. We have a, we have a Connecticut, uh, our Connecticut's uh, more on the milder side. Yeah. Our Sumatra's uh, just as I maybe even just a different flavor strength wise. Uh, then we have a, a, our, our field Maduro, which is a milder Maduro. Let some of that natural sweetness come through. Uh, we don't have a lot of, I don't think we have any Lajero in that Maduro. Uh, then we have our Corojo, uh, a little spice and pepper. Our Rosado, a uh, little bit bolder. Uh, then we have our Esquiro Maduro, which is our, it's probably our one of our bolder ones, yeah. our, if not our boldest. Um, and then our Victory is kind of what we call our celebratory cigar. It's our Brazilian Montefina. Um, we do that one in kind of limited releases where we change the Vitola. Uh, you know, we do like however many and then change the Vitola for the next edition. So right now we're on the fourth edition with that one. Um, we have our dumpster fire, which is our, uh, <laughs> it's our, our mixed filler cigar, yeah. right? <clears throat> so it's our Cuban sandwich. Yeah. You know, and we didn't know how to market our Cuban sandwich. So dumpster fire, we felt was appropriate. Yeah. It's a great name for a yeah. cigar. And it's got a very elegant band on it. It uh, does for for it's a burning dumpster, but it's it's really but it, it's a neat looking as band. a true dumpster fire. It was supposed to be released in 2020, but that year was such a dumpster <laughs> oh, fire. It actually yeah. didn't come out until the beginning of 21. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got our new night shift, yep. which uh, I'm almost done. Yeah. Um, but uh, what's the blend on the night shift? Uh, it's Ecuadorian Habano Oscuro wrapper, um, Indonesian binder, Nicaraguan filler. Hmm. Yep. It is delicious. That we was, actually put a little candela on it. It's hard to see right now because I've been smoking it, but we put a little candela ring on the, on the cap of this. Oh, nice cigar. Um, so the, the grab the band. The purpose behind the 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 night shift is like a homage to you know working with night vision, working at night, 
Uh, oh, I like really it. Hard. I like it. Yeah, so that's why we put a little bit of the candela on it. I'm not a candela smoker. I don't like candela. So we put it right on the cap where you don't have to actually smoke it. It doesn't, uh, but it looks cool. mouthfeel. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it does change uh, the mouth. It's, it's like a salad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, well, what what have been, you know, because you were talking about, you know, test blends, and that could be a really tricky, you know, thing to work through, especially in the very beginning, you know, when you're just, because you, you know what you like to smoke, but, you know, you may not necessarily know which leaves and combinations and and rolling styles right, right. and all that are going to get you to the result that you want so what what are some of like the key things that you've learned along the way that that maybe even some that have surprised you about the the concept and the process of of working with the factory on on test plans to get it dialed in exactly where you want it to be so i i have a story about that so <clears throat> the factory we work with now gonzalo He's a older Cuban guy. Uh, has been in tobacco industry for fifty years, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody. I mean, he's just a great dude, right? Uh, one of the, I don't know, the second or third trip we were going down there working with him. I, I had a blend on paper. I'm like, hey, Gonzalo, I want you to make I want this. these. <laughs> you know. And he, he looked at me and he told me no. And I'm like, no explanation. I'm like, well, I don't know if that's how this is supposed to work, but uh, uh so I said, why? And he's like, it won't burn right. And I'm like, okay. I believe you make me 10 of them. Yeah. And they, the combination of tobaccos I had weren't the right combinations and it didn't burn right. Mm. And, uh, but he knew that by looking at a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what I learned was trust the people that have been doing this yeah. their whole life. And, uh, you know, I have a, we have, we have an influence on obviously what the blend is, but we can tell him this is our goal yeah, yeah. and he helps us get there. You know, and, and we go through, I mean, when we do a new blend, it's, oh, I mean, it's a lot of, a lot, a lot of trial and error, but, a lot. <clears throat> but without a Gonzalo, yeah. uh, a couple of gringos that were infantry guys. Uh, well, I'll put it to you this way. We got some stuff sitting in our Hugo <laughs> that's been in there for eight years now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's still not fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> not even like, not even remote. I can't even be like, well, you know, with eight years age, it's. No, it's fucking it's so, dog tear. <laughs> so we, we we did a barber pull. And as you're blending, the barber pull we did was great. Oh, We're delicious. like, this is awesome, right? Well, I learned that once you roll a cigar and it re-ferments, you know, it, it ages, ages process, itself, yeah. right? It, it starts to ferment again and it ages itself. So when I smoked it 60 or 90 days later, it was literally the worst cigar I've ever had. Yeah, and, it was, but it was, but when they rolled it, it was good. Yeah. And so it still hasn't gotten any better. No, no. So there's, I mean, there's a learning process for sure. But like the, the cool thing with that though, is like, so we can go walk in the humidor and we can grab some of these cigars that we rolled eight years ago. Yeah. And we can sit down, we can smoke them and then try to think back to like the mindset we were in when we were sitting at the blending table for those. Yeah. And then use that as like kind of motivation for the next time we go blend because it's like okay we are not doing that again <laughs> yeah. well we're better at what we do yeah because we 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 go down there and we i learn every time i go to nicaragua i learn you know now it's more like i'm focused on like the crop kind of stuff and the mm. you know the major processing like what what does what and you know that's kind of what i'm focused on learning uh, but uh the, the military they they kind of do it the best and we kind of adopted that into kind of how we do things with warfighter where they do a program that's called they well they call it train the trainer um so they take one guy from a unit and they send him to a school to learn whatever skill or technique it is and they essentially become that subject matter expert and then they come back and they start training all the other guys now the other guys aren't certified they're not subject matter experts but they're extremely knowledgeable with first-hand experience on whatever that is yeah um and so we try to adapt that into what we do with cigars and you know like we st we were talking a lot about gonzalo he's kind of like that trainer you know he's like I mean? the master instructor yeah he's yeah. that dude he's like i'm a level of whatever like there's you know yeah. and we're just like the little kids sitting you know, indian on the floor in front of them be like oh what else are you gonna learn <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome yeah. <laughs> you want to ask that question go ahead dive in <laughs> Let's let's talk a little bit about um, mental health for vets. And, and are you guys involved in that? And I know first responders we uh, we go through it sometimes, well, a lot of times. A lot of times. But, um, and, uh, how do you 
how do you guys deal with it and how do you uh are you involved in any programs to help uh, other vets on which side uh, yeah, yeah. being side we're or, or the, the active side I think, <laughs> I think we're on both sides yeah i think we're both involved <laughs> in both sides the more i help the more it helps me it's a selfish yeah. thing um yeah. you know but uh yeah i think i mean i we both have our struggles with mental health yeah. uh you know it's uh you know and, and going back to the first responders you know i think you guys are overlooked way more than you should be Big time. you know we do the military thing and it's you know uh and then we're kind of done with it right but they like uh, you guys do it day in day out and that like and there's a lot of things like i think the general public doesn't understand yeah the shit that firefighters and police officers see on a daily thing it's not like oh well you know I'm a, I'm a cop and i get shot at all the time it's like no but you respond to accidents where people are dismembered and killed and just like yeah maimed you know what i mean and that affects people huge and i feel like it's just overlooked in the general public like oh he's just he's a firefighter he puts out fires no he saves lives yeah, yeah. every day more than he puts out fires yeah. you know but no, on the mental health side of things, like, um, I mean, both of us were, you know, prior military guys, we're both infantry guys. We deployed to Iraq 0304 for the initial invasion. Um, you know, it's definitely something that we've been on both sides of, like we said in the beginning. Yeah. We've been on the, the receiving side of it, um, you know, having to try to figure life out, having to try to figure out how to, you know, get back into the civilian side of things. Um, with us, when we had the gun store, when we would go do events, uh, whether it's a shooting event or put on a class or something like that, we'd always run into guys that were prior military. And we'd realize that through the activities that we were doing, um, that everybody was kind of in a better mood and a better headspace. Uh, when we started Warfighter, it kind of injected us back into that veteran community, that space that we were kind of missing. Um, and that allowed us to be able to get creative with the things that we were doing and how we can try to impact the veteran community for lack of better yeah. words um you know by moving to texas uh we started the company in nebraska we were in a town of what 600 people yeah but well, we were not far from lincoln no but but, yeah. but it, we did have a big populace we didn't have a huge we had a great community but the um, veteran community was small it was tiny um you know one of my really good buddies that was in nebraska uh you know prior military guy he wore a metal uh helmet and his m16 was stamped by mattel like that's when he served, you know, yeah. so it was a little bit different era than when we were in, um, you know, now that we're down in Texas, uh, especially San Antonio, you know, it's, yeah, it's huge. Veteran. They're everywhere. Yeah. You can't, you can't look anywhere in the San Antonio area and not see a veteran. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so we got heavily involved with some nonprofits, uh, that are local, you know, and, and, uh, some that aren't, um, and just kind of getting outside and trying to do everything that we can do with the cigar involved. Uh, just because we understand that this piece of tobacco right here is this yeah. is the key. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah know, it's, it's amazing because, I mean, me having not served, but still, you know, everybody goes through stuff. And it really is amazing whether, you know, I there are times, at least I'll speak from my own experience. There are times that I need like a mental break with a cigar just for myself to sit with you know music on or read a book or just to watch decompress a, watch a nonsense yeah. movie and decompress and there's other times that uh you know i need to pull you out of the house and i yeah that that on, i need go. to go yeah i need, yeah. To, go I need to go somewhere and have a cigar yeah. <laughs> i need to go somewhere with the guys and talk about bullshit for a few hours uh and and you know have a drink have a cigar um and even for those who don't drink that cigar and that that camaraderie, camaraderie that yeah. comes around that comes from the the knowledge of cigars and the desire to want to learn more about cigars and this hobby that we um Love. that we enjoy it's it 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 pulls us out of it it's pulled me out of dark places and i know it has a lot of other people mm -hmm. too where it just gives you something to focus on other than because one of the things i've been learning about a lot lately is is rumination this thing in mental health where we get stuck talking about and thinking about the stuff that's making us dark and sad yeah. and, and then and, it just spirals and makes everything and then worse. it spirals where all that it, and it, i feel like always, that's yeah. the epitome of va mental health rumination <laughs> yes no that that vicious circle it's is just spiral, spiral and yeah. they yeah. they inject you into that yeah they don't try to like take you out of it 
they're like, oh, you need yeah. to be right here, and they just make you spin yeah. forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just some some activity that's 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 gonna keep you from, and not that you shouldn't have times where you do talk about the shit you're going through because we we all should do that, but but if all we ever do is think about and talk about the shit that's m- making something dark in our life that's all we're ever going to be confronted with right yeah. and yeah sometimes you just got to unplug enjoy a fine cigar a conversation with friends i like the salad because it gets me out of my own head yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i like this thing we smoked this this two of of salad here just because it gets me out of my own head yep. and i can yep. focus on something else even if it's only for two three hours even yeah. if it's for me, even if it's not focusing on anything yeah. other than the cigar, That's like it. if I'm sitting by in the chair by myself and I'm focusing on the cigar, I'm not thinking about other shit. And yeah. that's nice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, so I do a lot of stuff with a nonprofit called Warfighter Scuba. Uh, and even though we have similar names, there's no correlation between, uh, Warfighter Tobacco and Warfighter Scuba. Um, Warfighter Scoop is a, a nonprofit. They're based out of um, Rotan, Honduras, but they also operate out of Florida. Um, and, you know, you were saying that you smoke that cigar to get out of your own head. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why I scuba dive. Uh, once mm. you go below water, everything above water doesn't matter anymore. None of it. It's gone. Immediately, it's out of your brain. You don't, nothing thinks of it. And if a thought creeps in, a fish swims by and you forget. And it's awesome. Um, you know, and like we were saying earlier about the nonprofits, that's one of the ones that we do a lot of stuff with um, just uh, because of the impact that they have, yeah. the, the end goal of what their their program is for the veteran. Um, some of them are uh, a little vague. <laughs> some of the nonprofits. <laughs> well, there's, a, there's a lot of nonprofits, and we get hit up so many times by nonprofits or golf tournaments or whatever. I could give the whole company away in probably three months. Uh, just by helping zero so left. <laughs> yeah so, okay. so what what warfighter has to do is we have to zero in on what we're you know one I, I like to know the people that are running the nonprofit, and we have to zero in on focusing on you know it's, I, it, it's about the impact two or three nonprofits, and then we can make an impact on that but it's what that nonprofit can do yeah are you actually helping or you're just offering a service that a thousand other nonprofits offer and there's no follow-up there's no yeah. community there's no any you know it's just like oh i had a great experience but where's the help like where's yeah. the where's yeah. the follow-through with it you know yeah yeah, yeah and that's that's got it you've got a you've got to vet nonprofits just like you know uh an employer vets an employee you know, you yeah. got to check references. You got to talk yeah. to people who are involved. You got to get, you know, down. Especially if it's a, it's an, if it's a nonprofit that, that uh, claims to, or or says that the reason that they're doing what they do is to help veterans. Yeah. Then you've got to you and and running the business. You guys don't. I I don't blame you a bit. You you don't have time to really deeply vet every single nonprofit that comes to you and says, can you donate a this? Can you donate an X or a Y or a Z? And I, I I agree with that, that you want to help. You obviously want to help and you guys are helping, but if, if you stretch yourselves too thin, there's going to be no company left to offer. Right. We found that out quite early. Yeah, <laughs> actually, we, we were too charitable too early, and uh, uh, we actually didn't even do a single sale, but we made a charitable contribution to the Fallen a- Fallen Angel Aviator Foundation. Yeah, which uh, is good charity. That was great yeah. charity. Um, and but, it was uh, awesome things that they were doing. But as far as a business decision, it was a poor one. Yeah, we looked back and we were like, oh, maybe we should have like waited at least a week or two until we started <laughs> actually selling stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in the greater scheme of everything, it worked out perfectly. Um, oh, sure, yeah. But at the time, we're like this. We're, this is way backwards. But that's <laughs> that, you know that's advice we give to new companies or, or veteran companies that ask us you know business questions like you know make your business profitable and then become charitable. Otherwise, it'll never you know you have to do it. In that yeah, order. you're kind of handicapping yourself. Yeah, yeah. Get it, get up and running, and then do everything that you want to do. But yeah. But, get up and running first that makes a lot of sense yeah, a lot of sense thank you so back to the yeah. back to the cigar world 
Um, yeah. One of the things I, I also love learning from people is, and you already mentioned, you know, a couple people, but um, we all have mentors and, you know, people who give us advice, um, even if it's even if it's not in any official capacity, just people who've given us solid advice over the years. Um, who have been some of the people in the cigar industry, um, whether they're retailers or other manufacturers, you know, that have been good with um, offering free advice, useful advice, um, that kind of thing along the way for you guys? Oh, man. That's a, I have so many people I can list, and they have no idea. Yeah. Like, remember I went to that shop in Arizona, yeah. and the guy tore me apart for 45 minutes, and I called you. I that wasn't advice, but we learned a lot. No, I learned a lot. <laughs> it, it, he didn't think he was giving me advice, but he was giving me advice. Yeah. I went into the shop in Arizona. I'm not going to name any names or anything like that because everybody will know exactly who I'm talking about. They probably will anyways, but either way, um, I don't take any offense to it. Well, we were uh, new. We were brand new. I walked into the shop, and, I mean, we're – this is us right we're t-shirt and jeans type of guys like uh, we're not going to put on a suit to go do a sales call um but we wore sport jackets i think two years at shows and people asked if we were okay yeah uh <laughs> like you know it's just you know we have we have like 511 button downs with you know warfighter uh um embroidered on it mm -hmm. so i had one of those nice pair of jeans and some cowboy boots i live in texas that's what i do yeah. Uh, so I walk into the shop for you know for a sales call and I'm like, hey, I'm John of the Warfighter Tobacco, you know, blah 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 blah, all that fun stuff. And, and he was very nice and very respectful and let me do my whole pitch. And he's like, hey, just step into my humidor. And I'm like, okay, cool. And he proceeded to just go up one side of me and right down the other for like 40 minutes and just tear me apart with every <laughs> everything that I said. He had, well, you know, blah 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 and this and that and your price point and this and blah 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 and it just everything. And I literally I walked out of there and I thanked him and I walked out of there and I got my truck and I called Scott and he's like, what's going on, man? And I'm like, bro, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. <laughs> I'm like, I really fucking don't. I'm like, oh, we just put a bunch of money in and we're, we're pretty new. Like, this is just yeah, we, we're, like, we're like six, eight months old at this point. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, this guy just fucking ruined my world. <laughs> uh, but I learned, I, I mean, I learned so much in that 45 minutes. Um, there's no other way I could have learned it um so he definitely taught yeah. me a lot uh you know but there's guys uh like tim swanson at cigars daily oh um, yeah i've had uh, i can't tell you how many hours of conversations with him um whether it's on the phone or after we get done recording one of his shows uh and just talking about the industry in general and just how things work and then afterwards like a day or two or a week later realizing like holy shit he just helped solve problems that i didn't even know and i hadn't yeah. we weren't directly talking about them but just through the conversation um, you know, and there's so much of that that happens. Yeah. Uh, we use a broker in Arizona, cigar mechanic, Brandon Wells. Um, and same thing through drunken conversations that shows in Vegas. <laughs> we've learned so much. And yeah. it wasn't like we were set out to do that. Um, I feel like a lot of the things that we've learned have just been on accident. Yeah. Um, it wasn't like. As far as an actual mentor, though, I don't know if we had anybody that really took us under their wing and really coached us. We had a lot of people try to screw us. We had a lot of people try to screw us. Not a lot. That's that's inevitable. Anyway. But we had a couple that were very much so yeah. tried to screw us. Uh, but um, but no, for the most part, though, this industry is awesome. It really Yeah. I mean, I all of the other manufacturers, uh, I like to think, like, you know, we're Switzerland. We, we get along with everybody. Uh, yeah. is kind of how we try to, you know, we don't, you know, we don't try to get sucked into drama for sure. Um, and we, we, we try to help out as much as we can, probably too much. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, we, we yeah, we've gotten some bad advice. Oh yeah. We did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You know, like when we, you know, cause we, <laughs> like we went into this, you know, social media heavy and, you know, we were told that oh you got to come in with the lowest price point of cigars and you have to beg the shop to carry it and then you know hope that they sell them for you yeah they, they have to teach their customers yeah and we're just like no that doesn't make any sense yeah <laughs> so you know we're we we run lean you know we we uh we're in i don't know, probably 300 shops across the country um but it's our customers our our customers go to the shop and we ask them to but we uh, all, we also don't have a sales team of twenty people. That that's what I mean. The yeah. yeah, we yeah. don't. You know, but the the customer goes to the shop, and the shops call us, and and yeah. you know that's how we get into a lot of the shops. So, um, is that the right way? I don't know, but it's the way that works for us. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Well, and it's been working for you guys. Like like you mentioned earlier, that that you learned from 
you know, some old school people and, and the cigar industry still is kind of an old school industry. Oh, yeah. And right. you know, the, a lot of people, it's taken a lot of older old school companies a long time to realize that, you know, stuff like websites, social media are vitally important to get today's, uh, you know, coming of age cigar consumers, you know, the, the 20 somethings and 30 somethings. If you're not on, if, if you're just putting a, a couple full page ads, you know, six times a year in cigar aficionado, that's not going to do it anymore. Nope. No. And, you know, you guys knew that right from the get go. And yeah. it's taken well, a lot of companies a long time to get that. The hey. main reason we didn't do cigar aficionado six times a year right out the gate um, was the cost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're, they're they're very proud of their advertising, mm -hmm. which I mean, it works for the great big companies, right? But yeah, for sure, absolutely. Some, somebody like us, you know, yeah, you know, we were laughing at your at the ad, you know, the uh, number number one not rated cigar. Yeah, yes. and we you know we were looking right. at each other like we that's brilliant. Like, should we be the number two unrated cigar? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you know, like you got to do what you got to do, right? Uh, um, so. So has there been any real tailors you went to and you sat there with the owner, you looked at the humidor and decided, I don't think we should be in the shop. Yeah. I don't yeah, think, I don't question. think they're going to work with us. They're not going to feed off of our, our vibe. Yeah. Uh, has and, and if you have that shop, how do you, do you just not call back? Do you just not show back up or no, how do you so deal with all that? We're, we're brutally honest sometimes to yeah. a fault. Um, so there's been some shops that, you know, just the communication just kind of fizzles out and nothing really comes of it. And then there's there's also been some shops where it's like, um, do you, do you can just go over there, right? We're like, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we've never that, we've never said that. Not directly to their face, but yeah, tactfully, we've said that we wouldn't be a good fit for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, and, and uh, sometimes we walk into a into a, a shop or or a, a retail establishment, maybe not a lounge. Uh, and they're just not taking care of the cigars. Yeah. And we're like, okay. You know, it, like, usually, like, it, it's not an ideological decision. It's not been like, well, we're, we just view things differently. Are these people? So, know, it has been, but sometimes it's on their end. Yes. Where they're just like, oh, I, we're not for what you guys stand for. Yeah. And then we're like, okay. Well, like, like, thanks for telling us. Yeah. 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 Um, but more often than not it's not that it's more like what scott was saying where like we've walked into a shop where we go in the humidor we're walking around we look up at a vent and there's mold growing out of the vent and it's oh. like, mm. okay so we're gonna make this a quick quick stop yeah. <laughs> we did. that's you know but like how, how do, you, do you say something like do you I call out on that you know no, what I mean? like I I, we haven't as a manufacturer we we're just like we didn't even say a word Jack, like nothing even happened. It was just like, okay, you know, we'll, we'll follow up later. I'm I've walked into a shop and before I even introduced myself, I've thought to myself, I'm not selling our cigars here and I'll, I'll go in the humidor, buy a cigar and leave. Yeah. And I act like I was yeah. just a customer. Yeah. 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 I, there's, there's a, uh, I've mentioned it so many times, but the notorious shop, um, just, just on the Wisconsin side of the border. They have a number of locations, but the one location just on the Wisconsin side of the border from Minnesota. Um, I've, I've walked into that shop, and this, this is a long time ago. I haven't been to the shop in ages, but walked in there um, the first time I ever went to the cigar shop, and this was, good Lord, forever ago. Um, they had mold growing, not just was there mold growing on the cigars. There was mold growing on the boxes and oh, the man. shelves. Oh, and I talked to the guy who was working there. I said, I said, you, uh, I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything, but you've got a severe mold. Cause it was a, they sold everything else too, you know, glass and, you know, yeah. stuff for weed and vapes and all that shit too. But I came out to the guy and I said, yeah. I'm not trying to be a jerk, but you've got a severe problem in your cigar humidor. And he's like, Oh, that's plume. <laughs> I swear, oh. God, I swear oh. he, he looked me right in the eye and he said, that's plume. I said, all right, have a good day. And I, I left and that was. The, the, the better the plume gets, the we add a dollar every month. <laughs> we measure it. The thicker it gets, the more we charge. Oh. Oh. So actually, the I, I don't know why I didn't talk about this before at all either, but where in Minnesota are you guys? 
just uh, suburbs just north of Minneapolis, yeah. St. Paul. Okay. I graduated high school in Rochester. Oh, no way. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I lived there for two years, my junior, senior year of high school. Um, no way. Yeah. So uh, we'll, yeah. we'll be down. Oh, we'll thanks, be down yeah. at a wedding in, in Wasika. Okay. Uh, Friday. On Friday. Nice. Uh, Garrett, oh. who used to be the co co host of the show, he's uh, he's getting married on Friday, and we're we'll be down at his wedding. That's awesome. Uh, so we, you know, we were talking about helping and giving back uh, a little bit ago um, through one of the ranches that we have done a lot of hunts on down here uh, in the past with veterans. Um, I became really good friends with the landowners, and every year they do uh, uh, a state sponsored youth hunt. Um, so the state of Texas teams up with the ranch. Uh, they bring out a group. Uh, it's anywhere between about 12 to about 18 kids under 14 um or excuse me under 16 and uh and we take them out we get them their first whitetail uh deer and uh so we have guides with them and a family you know parent with them as well uh and so um two of my high school buddies from minnesota actually are coming down to help guide these hunts um, oh nice very cool. yeah and so i brought one of them down last year uh and i mean it's it's it, it, it's almost a 9,000 acre ranch in South Texas. It literally, when you drive around this ranch, it feels like you're on three different planets because the ecosystem changes so much. Oh, nice. uh, it's an extremely unique place. And so I was telling my buddy about it. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, it's like the shit you see on hunting stuff on, on, on like TV. Yeah. And, and I'm like, I can't explain it to you until you actually come down here and get on the ranch. And this is also where we take veterans down all the time. Um, yeah. So he came down last year and he went and did it. And so he goes back and he tries to explain it to, you know, his buddies in Minnesota like to try to explain to somebody in minnesota what a, a nine thousand acre ranch in texas is it's it's just like you ever been in the moon well, it's really <laughs> cool it's really cool <laughs> uh and so he goes back last year and he tells all his buddies you know and, and explains this and his buddies like yep yeah, this is bullshit you know and you show him a picture and it yeah. does no justice uh and so one of our mutual buddies i'm like fuck it and i'm like you know i've hunted with you since high school i'm like you're coming down this year to, to guide and he's like no way and i'm like yeah and he's like oh shit and so now like every day he's, he's like what do i need to bring should i ship my guns down do, you, do i need this do i need that and i'm like dude just all you have to do is show up like that's it everything else to take care of it's it's yeah nice. um, so on his but, hunt uh, go yeah. ahead uh, no finish what you were saying i'm sorry no that, that was it that was it so on his hunt do you use you you guys use firearms or do you use bows uh firearms um so it's it's actually extremely organized, uh, even though it's controlled chaos, um, because we have 16 kids running around, yeah. just having the time of their lives. Um, but they all they show up, uh, you know, Friday afternoon. Um, we'll get all of them. Uh, we have a, a hundred yard range that's built on the property. We get every one of the kids with their rifle, uh, confirming zero. We adjust if we need to. It also allows us to realize who needs a little bit more or less help with a guide in terms of shooting. Um, and then we pair the kids with the guides. Um, and then we, uh, we kind of cherry pick the blinds depending on the story that uh, the family has or the kid has, or, you know, anything that they have going on. Mm -hmm. um, and then we go out Saturday uh, first thing in the morning. Uh, we sit all, all morning, we sit in the evening and then we sit Sunday morning as well. Um, and then the years prior, every single kid's gotten their first year. Um, most mm. of them have gotten a pig as well. Uh, and then actually last year we had one, uh, it was a, uh, I think it was a, th a 13 or 14 year old boy, uh, actually got two bobcats. Oh, nice. The same, the same time within 45 minutes. Wow. It was insane. Uh, I love it. it. It was awesome. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite hunts we do. We also do another hunt in January. Uh, it's a dog and knife hunt. Uh, so there's Ooh. no firearms involved at all. Actually, Scott was yeah, on this one. I got to the do the last, last, last year. That was it. Uh, it was something. I, I like to say it's the most intimate form of hunting that I've ever done. Yeah. Um, mm. I don't really know another way to explain it because you're just you're using a knife and you're it's very hands-on. Um, the dogs grab them? Yeah. So, well, so the dogs, they essentially corral them in the middle of the woods and then we go in with catch dogs and it they kind of hold the pig and then we make it kind of safe. We pull the dogs off, make sure the pig's... I don't know. Not going anywhere. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. As safe as we can for a veteran and a wild animal. Uh, and then we bring the veteran in uh, and, you know, they, they do their thing. Harvesting. Um, yeah. Uh, it's very clean. It's very ethical. Um, it, it's very, very, very quick. 
Uh, yeah. But it's also very intimate. So when you get a veteran in that space, um, it gets interesting because mm. you, you're putting this veteran in a space where they're doing something that triggers a lot of emotions that they might not be ready for. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so the good part about it is the landowners and the crew that we have that the or the crew that the landowner has that helps uh, in, in the group of guides and veterans that we have that go out um, to facilitate the hunt. Uh, have been doing it long enough and have enough experience doing it that it's uh we've never had a bad experience with it um it always comes out we always we always do AAR, you know after action reviews uh we have the campfire talk in the evenings the uh, cigars around the cigars campfire. around the campfire yeah. uh and and then we always talk about what we did um and it there's a, a clear difference between that veteran on a friday or thursday or friday when they show up for the hunt and on sunday when they're leaving to go back home it's a mm. totally different person between that Friday and that Sunday. Uh, and it's, the only thing is is commonality of people, cigars. And it's definitely a team and an sport. activity. A hundred percent team sport. It's not a by yourself thing. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's pretty amazing. It really, really is. Sounds like a blast. Mm-hmm. So do you guys think it's time? Um well, I was gonna ask them one of the questions about what they like pairing their cigars with. But I think yeah. they answered that earlier. Well, whiskey. Is, whiskey. <laughs> is this whiskey just Jameson or? No, we drink a lot of different a things. Of but, you know, we got, so we do a Warfighter Tobacco podcast. Well, just, and, we can run run down the bar real quick and just, well, we can kind of get that. We, we, you know, we got asked this last week. Oh, yeah. What do you, how do you know how, what to pair a cigar with? And I said, well, pair a cigar that you know you like with a drink you know you like. Yeah. If you pair a cigar, you start. Have. Right. If you take a cigar you don't like. Even and you pair it with the drink you like, it's probably not going to work out, and vice versa. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't think there's a so definitely don't pick it. a cigar you don't like and a drink you don't like and try right. to put those together. Yeah, it won't work. You won't like either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, I, I like to because I like I like tequila too, and hmm. so like smoking the same cigar. If you go, you know, pair it with whatever whiskey or bourbon. And then the next time the same cigar and you pair it with uh, tequila, it's vastly different. Or if oh, yeah. you. And I enjoy that. You split your drinks in the same cigar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I learned that at a, a cigar bar in Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, unexpectedly. Right. Uh, right when we first started, I drank them out of Jameson. I didn't realize it. It was my second drink. So <laughs> I, it wasn't me. It was the guy before me. Um, but uh, when we're in Nicaragua, they don't really have. Well, I, I'll just say they have. They don't have good whiskey. No, it's crap whiskey. Uh, they have Jack Daniels, Jim Beam. That's a and then hit. scotches that they consider whiskey. Yeah, they're sure. not. But uh, they have good so, rum. Yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah, so yeah. my one when I didn't have Jameson to go to, they had the, the bartender was like, "Hey, I got Florida Kanye Seven, and I'm like, "Oh, I like that. I'll take that on the rocks." So he poured it to me, and I took a sip, and I took a drag off my cigar, same cigar that I was drinking the whiskey with, and I was like, "Wait a minute!" Yeah, I'm man. like that is. Hold on a second. So then I, I was like, okay, I need a, that whiskey on the rocks, and I have this rum. And uh, give me a tequila, and then I started going back and forth. I'm yeah. like, oh, this is cool. That's <laughs> that's my favorite way to pair. Uh, yeah, when you're changing it up. Yeah. All right, guys. So a couple fun non cigar related questions for you guys, uh, John. Let's start with you on this one. If you were about to get into a fight, what would your soundtrack music be? Oh man, this is a tough one. I know this <laughs> because it goes really deep. You know this one? Okay, what do you got? For me, it's Guns and Roses. Get in the ring. Okay. 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 See, like, I half of me wants to have fun with it. Right. And, like, I want, like, It's Raining Men to be playing in the background <laughs> or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just the, <laughs> the intimidation factor, you know? Yeah. Yes. But then yeah. the other half of me is just, like, I need, like, like <laughs> some hype music. So Scott and I were in a <laughs> incident oh, yeah. where we had somebody playing theme music for us. Okay. Um, and it was a real life scenario. Yeah. Uh, and we were probably, I think, I believe, we got- unofficially, we were the first unit for this to happen with. I think so. Um, unofficially, because I, I don't know who else I can confirm this with or not. But so our first firefight that we got into when we were in Iraq, we were in Anajaf. Uh, we had Psy- a Psyop uh, team attached to uh, our, our unit when we were uh, taking the city. 
And so the first firefight that we got into, uh, a psyops team had had a Humvee with a great big speaker system on top. That it's like deafening loud, right? And it was saying, you know, like we're not, we don't mean any civilians harm. Just go in your house, you know. It's doing psyop stuff, right? Yeah. So and uh, so so we we get into this firefight and they're shooting at us and we're shooting at them, uh, and we have air on station, so we're calling in air support. Uh, and then all of a sudden, it, we all hear this sound. The, the, the song start to play and, and nobody really understood what it was at first. Um, and it was so loud that both sides actually stopped shooting everybody for about three or four seconds. Uh, and it was just dead calm. They weren't shooting at us. We weren't shooting at them. And then we realized what they were playing and they were playing drowning pool. Uh, let the, let bodies, the bodies hit the floor. floor. Oh, and it was you know, like the the intro to that song kind of takes a little bit to work up to it, and then the the you know everything drops, and then so when everything dropped, it was just a wall of lead that came from everybody. It was like them. celebratory. Fire it was at that insane. <laughs> um, but I believe that we were one of the first units, may, maybe the first unit uh, that that had troops in contact where that song was played. This is bro, I was there. <laughs> we were in Adishef in the hundred first. We're, uh, what unit were you in? Yeah. That's funny. Uh, cause it'd be really cool if you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he says, you know, then they played you. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. That might have been. Might have been. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah. So if I was going to get into a fight, uh, I mean, that would, yeah, that's that a good kind of have to yeah. be it. But it, it depends on the fight, though. You know, like that was yeah. a really big fight. This, yeah. If it was just me and a guy in the street, then I hope he's just not wearing Birkenstocks. <laughs> I know it. I understand that reference, and I wasn't even in the military. <laughs> um, Raleigh hit him with. Oh, he's head. in one five Marines. You were on the other side of town. Yeah. <laughs> so, what is the most underrated and overrated fast food? Scott, go first. Uh, the most overrated is In and Out Burger. Yeah, that, that is sucks. such a popular answer for mm-hmm. overrated. Yeah, you know, uh, 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 I'm gonna speak some blasphemy real quick, but Whataburger is also overrated. It is, except for the except, <laughs> except, except for the, the breakfast, breakfast burger, burger. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. really good. Oh, yeah, uh, underrated <laughs> fast food. Underrated, hmm. I'm gonna go with Schlotzky's. Yeah, I fucking good. love Schlotzky's. I, yeah, Schlotzky's good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember Schlotzky's. I haven't had Schlotzky's in yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. Texas, mm-hmm. Oklahoma, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember where it was I had Schlotzky's. Uh, I think I've only been there once, but I was nowhere near here. But mm-hmm. I honestly don't remember where it might. Maybe it was Indianapolis. Hmm. I don't know if they got him there or not, but it, it was somewhere like lower Midwest. Like, yeah. Somewhere in Indiana in, or Ohio. They had him in Nebraska for a number of years, and then they started closing down. Yeah. And, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I can't wait for Justin to ask this next question because oh the, the answers from you guys, I think, could be uh, could Very be pretty lights out. Okay. Well, this will be right. fun. You guys ready? <laughs> sure. The zombies are coming. Oh, let's go. <laughs> you get to pe- pick three people from the cigar industry to be on your zombie apocalypse survival squad. Who do you pick and why? Let's go with you first, Scott. John and Matt Booth. Uh <laughs> Matt Booth for entertainment, and he's used to be a Marine, so he's yeah. probably a little familiar. Uh, yeah. John, because I know he can shoot. I mean, I'm going, obviously, you. Uh, who else would I want in the cigar industry? Oh. You know it would be fun? <laughs> <laughs> I have two people that would be fun. And and for for opposite reasons, but they both be fun. Um, Jonathan Drew, because it would be like a personal protective detail, just trying to move somebody along that has no <laughs> idea what the hell is going on in life. I, I, <laughs> it's I like, call, sir, I, you're coming this way. <laughs> I, I call that a decoy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> or a distraction. Yeah. And then my other my other one would be Steve Saka for comedic relief and it's not because he's going to be funny it's because it's going to be so miserable just the shit that comes out of his mouth is going to be comical i think that would be really yeah. fun yeah yeah um but no like it, it's really hard to, to it, even in the hypotheticals like i want somebody that i know can fight yeah 
or I want yeah. someone that's going to make me laugh. Yeah. But other than that, I don't want anybody else. <laughs> like, that's it. Like, either you're going to be beside me. I know you can handle it. Or, like, you better be fucking funny. <laughs> well, and there's the added benefit of, you know, if you get if you get one of the really big guys, you know, that there's, you know, not to be stereotypical or anything, but there's a good chance they're going to have, they're, they're just going to have a sixth sense about where to find food. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> true. Yeah, it is still time to reveal this week's spirit of mystery uh, brought to us by Post on your cigars. Now, I've been drinking this cigar throughout or drinking this cigar. I've been uh, <laughs> drinking this whiskey. To drink. <laughs> <laughs> I've been drinking this whiskey <laughs> throughout the show and I do like it. Uh, there's a lot of sweetness to it. I'm going to say that there's something familiar about it mm-hmm. and it's got this kind of funky twang to it that okay i i don't think you, because i i don't think you would give me this brand again because i think does it least, have a river or a creek in it <laughs> <laughs> well i don't if if it's the brand i'm thinking of i don't know if you would give me this brand again even if it's a different type of mm-hmm whiskey from them but i could be wrong it's i'll i'll say this if it's the brand i'm thinking of this is the best whiskey i've tried from them well spit it out is it hooten young oh shit <laughs> <laughs> you got it is it really Whoa. wow Holy wow shit look at you i do that put them on camera you want to go there okay yeah so six year cabernet cask finish okay i was not i didn't because you just gave me a hoot and young like within the last couple months i think that was the one that you said you didn't like six, yeah a year ago now this i this is the first time i've had this particular this one, yep. whiskey from them this is better than the stuff that i've had from them before so what happened was i gave him we had a at one of the shops we had a hoot and young with the cigars and yeah he hated it few yeah, uh, yeah like two Two, three years ago. Yep. And I was like, uh, the cigars are good. I'm not a fan of the, the whiskey. And, and then, then about a month ago, maybe two <laughs> months ago, yeah, I gave him the same bottle again. And he was like, this is really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you made a liar out of me. Mm-hmm. This It's got that same... I don't know. Or, so- or your palate changed. You yeah. know? It could I mean, be my... Like, yeah. Or the day he ate something. Might be the right. day. Yeah. Yeah. Should he move There's that so day? much that goes into yeah. that. Yeah. But this this one, it's got that same because there is some sort of, and I know it's you know, contract. I think it's contract distilled, but regardless, it, there's some familiar, like funk, in all their whiskeys, and this has it too. And I was like, there's no way this is a Hoot and Young whiskey though, mm-hmm. but there's some like sweetness that just mellows out everything on the palate with this drink, and this this is definitely the best whiskey I've had, uh, from them definitely so yeah nice pour thank you brother mm-hmm. um all right what do we have next Notable oh smokeable. thank you very yeah, much yeah. we have oh, i want to since we're since you were talking about hooten young whiskey yeah I'm, i might take norm hooten for the zombie thing oh, oh that's a good fuck. choice that's he would a good be choice. he would be a good I didn't choice. think of that yeah <laughs> go sorry dude it's you and norm <laughs> right that's it like let's fucking yeah go. let's go <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> fuck i didn't even Wow. Yeah. Well, I feel I feel like with with the three of you guys. Yeah. With with you two and Norm, I feel like the que- the only question is what fucking zombies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, and Norm would be a so oh, fun. man. What a mentor to have for the zombie <laughs> apocalypse. <laughs> Fuck. What do you want to know about cigars? Nothing. Pick up your gun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, guys. So in this segment, each of us names a cigar that we smoked recently. That was notable to us. And obviously, you're smoking mostly your own stuff. But if you ever get a chance to, you know, jump outside of your own portfolio. Now, this could be a cigar that's been on the market for decades that you smoked for the first time in a very long time. Or it could be a cigar that's brand new to the market that you smoked for the first time ever. Uh, is there something that you guys have smoked recently that stood out to you? Um, I got one. The CAO, uh, they do an all Brazilian one. It's got like the the BX three, the BX three, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, that's a. I like that cigar because I like Brazilian tobacco. I believe it's the Espinosa Laranja, the orange band. Orange. Orange, 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 orange. Orange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Um, that uh, I I, I like that guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just fired my second cigar up. It's the it's the Espinosa Laranja oh, Escuro. Mm-hmm. Oh, the Escuro. Yeah, that one's good too. Just, the just the orange is. band is is the one that I like. Oh, the orange band yeah, is lights yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, we could have took the easy button and, and chose warfighter stuff. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, mine is the fifth anniversary of OJT, and they had Stolen Thrones make it for them. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, it's pretty damn good. Yeah, that's why I didn't bring you one. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you brought yeah. me, a, you brought me a good glass of whiskey, though, so I you're forgiven. So, the 26th, they released it. And okay. before the show, I was about to order 10, then we got in the show and I forgot. So I had to call him and say, hey, listen, do you got any more hiding around there? So you, I might, he goes, I might be able to give you a couple, sell you a couple. So I got some, and it's fabulous. Nice. Nice. Justin, what was your notable this week? Um, let's see. I think I was over at Buddy's house. Oh, I was over at Pickle's house last weekend, and uh, yeah, I had a uh, Argos, the new release, Stolen Thrones from that event. You guys got mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I yeah. Didn't get to make it, but I had that. Uh, so thank you, David Crawford, a.k.a. Pickle. Nice. Uh, for me, it was a uh, cigar I've liked ever since it came out. I haven't had one in quite a while. The Davidoff Winston Churchill Late Hour. Um, just had that, uh, last week, middle of last week. And yeah, it's just one of those cigars. It's like every time I smoke it, I'm like, yep, now, yep. These are really good. I, I wish I could afford to smoke those things every day, but, um, it's a good every once in a while cigar, I think. So, and actually lower price point than a lot of other Davidoff stuff. I got a question for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so you on that cigar, you brought up Winston Churchill, mm-hmm. and so that is a, uh, a a figure that is very prominent in the cigar industry. Um, oh yeah, but it, it was for it was years ago. It wasn't like anything recent. Yeah, and we don't really have like a, a new Winston Churchill. What do you think has to happen in the world for the industry to have a new Winston Churchill? Hmm. Mm. Wow, what a question. Holy shit. We have to have a politician that gets behind cigars and actually smokes cigars in public. Right. That's, and then we have yeah. to have a World War Three. What yeah. <laughs> well, let's try to avoid that. But you know, part. like yeah. that first part is yeah. just killer. Like, do you think that in our lifetimes that we'd experience that? I think Ted Cruz smokes cigars, oh, but somebody that would do it publicly. Yeah, right. No, yes, yeah. yeah. somebody. That's somebody who is like part of their. It's it's almost part of their personality. Churchill, right. it was part of his personality. Rudy Giuliani. But yeah, yeah even that he's. He, but I mean, like they used to come up with like 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 oh he used yeah. to put a paperclip in it so the ash hung on right you know like, no it was just a decent cigar oh, yeah. like lots, <laughs> lots of comments here so we got Andy Garcia Jesse Ventura Jesse Ventura Arnold that that's close Arnold does Arnold's close. close are we yeah. talking about a political figure that would do it or just well, okay so both of those kind of are, it, it it doesn't really matter the position that they're in it's somebody that has an impact like Winston Churchill had right. or has in the industry. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. to, to be to to get to that level, like I don't know if Arnold could do it or just does it does it have to be a politician? No, but somebody so, that can get to that notoriety. Well, most of, most of those people, the the their name is the brand. <laughs> I know, right? Like Padron. Well, like you know what I mean? Like it's a. Uh, but here's but, one so, so outside like, of the box answer that I have, and it's not a politician. It's actually he. Well, he's somebody that is widely in the public eye. I know who you're going to say it too. Joe Rogan. Yep. Okay. Okay. Because he's one of those people that he has, I mean, one of the reasons I like to listen to his podcast is because he'll have people from every possible walk of life on there. Yeah. Right. He'll have people on the left, people on the right, scientists, comedians, actors, writers, you know, psychologists. And yeah. he doesn't give a fuck what you say about him no he does not and and he is he on that show 
he maybe not every episode, but for the last few years, he'll have a cigar at least every other yeah, every yeah, third yeah. episode. Yeah, but and he I talks th- about cigars regularly. I think with us being in the industry, we notice this, and mm-hmm. with everybody else that isn't like you know our average cigar smoker, they know Joe Rogan as weed and shrooms. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, but I get where you're coming from. Like, he'd be a perfect candidate. Like, just, Joe, smoke more cigars. He's too healthy. Smoke more cigars, bro. <laughs> That's it. You need like six or seven a day in public on everything that you do, and then we might get to that Churchill status. Come on, man. That, and the that's the up. thing. There's a there's a channel, um, on a whiskey channel on YouTube where they did, they they were like, we're gonna do the Winston Churchill diet for 24 hours. <laughs> so they said we're gonna drink everything he drank eat everything he ate and smoke everything he smoked. Yeah. And they were on the floor by like two in the afternoon. Uh-huh. But yeah. but you don't see a Joe Rogan diet. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if Winston Churchill has a diet that people follow today, like I would rather do the Winston Churchill diet. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Who wouldn't rather yeah. do that diet? Like it's Joe Rogan. He just, he eats meat. That's it. <laughs> yeah. You know, like and then yeah. he talks about his poops. Like, no, I'm good. Winston Churchill had a way better life. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need that though, honestly, and 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 specifically, mm-hmm. specifically in politics, I think we need somebody yeah. in politics who finally like. We need somebody um, with a beard. We need to bring yeah. beards back. Yeah, <laughs> beards. I'll, I'll go run, guys. I got this. <laughs> serious. I'll vote for you, bro. Let's do this. <laughs> Justin's got this. Yeah, we need somebody who's who's in politics with a beard who is outspoken or not even outspoken about the fact but just completely public and open about the fact that he's pretty much always got a cigar lit up between his fingers or in his yeah. in his mouth like they need to sit down for like a debate and he needs to be smoking. well the problem is now you can't smoke wherever you go if right. i'm a presidential candidate and i'm going to do a debate i don't care what you you can mute the mics you can do this you can do that you can script every question but if I can't smoke a cigar on that stage, I'm not doing it. Well, that's why you're probably not there. Well, 100%, that's why I'm not there. That's it. <laughs> that's the only reason. <laughs> that would be a good. Uh, that would be a good thing to say. Hey, I- I'm happy to debate so and so, as long as we hold the debate at. Uh, as long as I can smoke a cigar inside. Yeah, yeah as long as it. I can. As long as I can mm-hmm. smoke a cigar from my podium, I'll be. Yep. I'll be 20 feet away from you, so you don't have to smell the cigar smoke. Yeah. And like it. we can have a rabbit air, you know, set up right behind you so, or right in front of you. So you don't have to, you know, have the, or right next to me. So you don't have to smell the cigar smoke. Um, but that's, I, that's what I do when I, when I'm working, when I'm doing whatever, I, I have yeah. a cigar in my hand. So, so I think we're onto something. I mean, for, it would be they're fabulous. Just, they're just smoke a cigar together, you know, in, in Congress. Then we'd be all, some shit would get done is what we're saying. Right. Well, you, you'd realize real quick. A lot of people have no idea what they're doing. They turn green. <laughs> yeah. I'm all yeah. for it. I know. Let's go. Con- congressional cigar night. That sounds yeah, right. Awesome. <laughs> September 16th. We have HDA cigars. Hermanos de Armas. Brothers in arms. Cannot wait to have those guys on the show. Uh, sep- uh, September 12th, a reminder, Cigars and Baseball cigars coming and up baseball. in just a few days uh, right here in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, September 30th, we have Storm Bowen from Cigars and Warriors. Oh, oh, cigars yeah. for Warriors, sorry. And the 25th, we 25th. have our two vets coming in from the fire department. We do, yeah. So and are we going to do that right here in the studio? Right here. Fantastic. Are we going to fit two more guys in here? I might set up the poker table. We'll have plenty what, what, of room. What branch are they? One was uh, airborne, airborne so sniper. Army. Yep, and the other one is it's Marines. Oh, they'll be fine. Mm-hmm. You, you just give them one chair; they'll share it. Everything. <laughs> <goes great. laughs> nice. Um, so, guys, thank you so much for being on the show. If you would please give our viewers and listeners an idea, where is the best place for them to keep up with everything going on with Warfighter Tobacco Company? Uh, we got uh, our website, warfightertobacco.com. 
Facebook uh, is Warfighter Tobacco. Instagram is Warfighter Tobacco. Twitter is Warfighter Tobacco. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube is uh, Warfighter Tobacco. We do, we do the, our own podcast too, Warfighter Tobacco. The only the one podcast. that's different is TikTok. It's Warfighter Co. Uh, because we got banned with every other thing we've tried that's so far. True, yeah. um, oh, this yeah. is like our eighth or ninth account, I think, at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it's fun. Chinese. I blame the Chinese. <laughs> it's yeah. China. Yeah. You know why I like TikTok? I purposely talk shit to China on my phone, and I know they can hear it. Like he doesn't watch yeah. any. Yeah. He doesn't watch anything. He just opens the app and he yells at his phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you guys mentioned that you're in about 300 shops right now. Do you have a retailer? locator on we, your website we do yeah um, fantastic yep right right on the top of the website we have a tab that says dealer locator uh that'll show you all the shops that are close to you uh if you don't have any shops that are are close uh go to warfightertobacco.com uh you can find everything right on there um, fantastic and then if you have any questions uh we have a little chat bot that's on there uh or you can just send us an email info at warfightertobacco.com um there's a phone number list on the website too if you want to talk to dave uh yeah did i miss anything i think no. i got everything uh, we do a podcast, Warfighter Tobacco Podcast, as well. Um, that's on all the podcast platforms. Uh, we try to talk about a little bit of everything, uh, a little bit of cigar-related stuff, a little bit of behind-the-scenes type stuff. Uh, we've had other reps uh, and brand owners on. Um, we've had veteran influencers, uh, a little bit of everybody. Um, and, uh, you know, like we talked about this whole show, this little thing right here just breaks that barrier and opens up that conversation. Yeah. So um, we, we try to use it. Uh, it's a tool. You know, we have to use every tool in our tool bag. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for being on the show, man. We had a blast thanks, talking gentlemen. to you and learning from you. So yeah, uh, no problem. thanks for being on. Yeah.